upset. Great stuff, Wiley. We'll see the Army defense second because Wake Forest won the toss and deferred. Jeff Munkin and Dave Clawson are the same age, just four months apart age-wise, they're each 55. They were hired 20 days apart in December of 2013. Dave Clawson's first FBS win came over Jeff Munkin, who he was teammates with on the University of Buffalo staff 30 years ago. All right. Ty Ear Tyler and Cade Ballard are the two quarterbacks that we're going to see for this triple option offense that Wake Forest, frankly, could not stop a year ago up at West Point. Well, I don't think either defense could stop that offense, but Army, they're going to have to control the clock today, and that means Jacoby, the big fullback, 260 pounds, he's going to have to carry the load for this offense. In past years, Wake Forest had multiple weeks to prepare for Army, and it had mixed results. No bye week before the game. It's a bye week after tonight for Wake Forest. And the first carry picks up four. It's the true freshman, Hayden Reed, who carried the ball eight times against Georgia State last week. He had no carries. Their first couple games only made his debut in the backfield game three against Villanova. Look, look without Raleigh in the backfield, Hey, he's going to carry the load. Last week, he looked pretty good. And that's a pretty good gain on first down when you're running the option. Brian, as a former defender, what's it like playing the option when you don't usually go against it? Well, you know, the key is you got to stop the fullback. And then once you stop that fullback, back, you got to pressure the quarterback and make sure he gets rid of the ball quick enough to where your defensive backs can react. Tyre, Tyler going deep. It's caught. Down inside the 25-yard line, Tyrell Robinson. Wow. Way to start this game off. I know we went over and under on how many times Army would pass the ball, and they come out early in the ball game and throws this ball up in the air. And look, when you got an athlete out there, he's going to make a play. Robinson, great concentration, way to focus on catching this ball because Mustafa was all over him. Yeah, he beat Mustafa 47 yards and down to the 24-yard line. Black Knights have completed just one pass in their previous two games, but they catch Wake on a deep ball, and we get a flag. Jerry Magalanis is our white hat tonight. Ball start, offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty, first down. The tight end, Josh Lingenfelter. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to send an early message, that's the best way to do it, pass the ball, and all of a sudden, that Wake defense is saying, oh, we can't just play this option. We got to watch out. They may change up from last year. It's not uncommon that they have no passing yards for a quarter or a half or a game, but 47 yards right off the bat tonight. And another flag pre-snap that halts play. Jeff Munkin will not be pleased. Ball start, offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty, first down. Wow, Munkin, <laughs> Munkin has to be really, really upset. Last week, turnovers cost him, to me, the game against Georgia State. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you got two early penalties after a great passing play. Got them in great field position. BJ, such a misleading final score last week. If you're a Wake fan and saw they lost 31-14, it was 17-14, and the Black Knights had it on the doorstep and were stopped on fourth and goal from the one to take the lead. Another throw and another completion. Isaiah Alston this time picks up some of the penalty yardage lost. It will be second and 11 from the 25-yard line. Wow, what a great strategy for Army to start this game. Throwing the ball. Tyler drops back in Austin. We saw him in the pregame making a lot of great one-handed catches. And man, boy, he got pounded. Tyler. Tyler Williams pancaked him. <laughs> and think about this. Tyre Tyler had two completions in four games before completing two passes on this the drive. Plays under further review for targeting. Interesting. We'll take the timeout. Early review, Army.
with an early scoring roughing the passer because Williams lands with his full force on Tyre Tyler but his helmet was not leading on the tackle no his face mask was in Tyler's chest and you're right though he could have tried to avoid the quarterback after the ball was out so I would have threw the flag on roughing the passer but not targeting the opening drive for the Army Black Knights. The program that's won 18 games over the past two years, a couple of nine win seasons. Jeff Munkin has two double digit win seasons in his tenure. They have a tall task tonight, but they do not shy away from anybody. Down to the 18 yard line for Tyler, and it will set up third down and short. Terrific job up front by this offensive line. You've got to have an athletic offensive lineman when you're running the option. And look at these big guys. Just get across the body. And how about Reed just leading the way? And Tyler's just so talented, so quick, so shifty. Gained seven yards on that play. Broadcasters every week talk about it, Brian. It's so important for Army's offense to stay on schedule. And from first and 20, they've gotten up to third and four. A manageable third down here for Army. First carry for Jacoby Buchanan. Earns a new set of downs for the Black Knights. Year in, year out, this Army team is among the best in the nation in running the football and doing what they do. And look, already took four minutes off the clock, almost four minutes. They're going to have to burn the clock, keep this offense of Wake Forest off the field. And that was good to see Jacoby back in the lineup and gaining those five yards for a first down. Crazy thing, last year, Wake scored 70 points in like 16, 17 minutes of time of right. possession. Black Knights into the CPI security red zone. Buchanan, a bowling ball of a back. And he may have lost the football. Wake Forest saying they recovered the fumble. Army says otherwise. And at some point, we'll get to the bottom of that. Malik Mustafa coming up and making the hit, trying to get the ball out of there. We may have a fumble. Rondell Bothroyd says he has the ball. Still no signal as the officials confer. It's a huge call early in this game, Brian. And Munkin does not want to see a early turnover. Well, I think three turnovers against Georgia State in that first half. His words, they wasted 30 minutes of their lives. <laughs> yes. The verdict. Wake starting to celebrate. Defense coming off the field for the Dakes. Big play by Malik Mustafa coming up and getting that ball. The ruling on the field was the fumble recovered by the defense. The previous play is under further review. Jeff Munkins perturbed. We're going to review it. We'll be back. Alanis has the call for the teams and for you. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. First down, Wake Forest. We were watching the replay during the break, Brian. Nothing conclusive one way or another. Right. What a great job by Mustafa coming up from that safety position. And a guy like Jacoby, you got a swarm tackle of him, and the ball just came out. Look at those hands just pushing at that ball. Just a great stand by this defense. It has to be disappointing for Army the way they came out and drove down the field. They get it inside the 10 and then turn it over. And Wake Forest. First snap is a handoff. Sam Hartman giving it to Justice Ellison, who's coming off a career best 114 yards rushing last Saturday against the Seminoles. Sam Hartman making his 38th career start for the Deeks tonight. A quick snap. He's got 23 wins, and he runs it up the middle. And he runs into the grasp of Leo Lowen, who's coming off a career high 12 tackles a week ago for Army. Wow, look at this. I just love the RPO offense. Look, at it. he keeps his eyes down the field. Uh-oh, receiver's not open. 
tucks it away and gains about five yards. Hartman's first throw is to the tight end, Blake Whitehart. And he's glad to see 85 back out there after Blake missed last week with an injury. This is why he's so good. He uses everybody. Blake Whitehart back in the lineup. A big target for Hartman. Moving the chains on third down and back on the ground. Ellison again across the line of scrimmage. Picked up five. How about this? Let's take a look at this. Pats him on the back. You go with it. And Ellison, a career high 114 yards last week against Florida State. Starting to step up. Hartman gives it off, and Christian Turner shakes free. Peyton Hampton got pressure in the backfield, but could not bring the runner down, and Wake Forest picks up 14 and moves the chains again. Wow, what a great job by Kristen Turner here. I don't know where they got mixed up here. Big rush by Army. It wasn't Hampton, it was Andre Carter. Andre Carter. Wiley talked about it. Hartman wants it all. Deep ball, Perry! Caught down at the 12-yard line. This is what he does so well. He knows he has some athletic wide receivers. He'll just put the ball out there and allow them to make the play. Excellent play by A.T. Perry. Is there a play clock, Brian? The play clock <laughs> operator can relax. Christian Turner down to the seven. Check out the grab by Perry. Look, just reaching out there. Fingertip catch, brings it in. Just excellent concentration. Big kid, 6'5", 205 pounds. Turner, sprint for the goal line, and he's chopped down a yard shy by Markel Broughton, the captain of this Army defense. Markel Broughton, second leading tackle on this Army defense, and he is the leader. He's going to have to make some big plays today. Back to Turner, and he's in. Touchdown, Deeks. That was a sprint down the field after the possession began inside their own 10-yard line. <laughs> we talked about it early. Only 17 minutes last year against Army with the ball, 70 points. And boy, did they just go down the field in a hurry. Picking up right where they left off. 91 yards and nine plays in two uh, in 160 seconds. <laughs> wow, that was a blur. Hartman two for two for 53 yards. Turner four carries for 26 and the touch. Matt Dennis stays perfect on PATs on the year. On the march to 70. Tide line that it should be 7-7 seven, because seven, they were moving the ball pretty good too. But Wake Forest gets the turnover on the Buchanan fumble and goes 91 yards in nine plays. Before we get too high scoring into this game, Brian, let's get to our keys to the game brought to you by your local Ford dealers. What you got tonight? Well, for Army, I said they have to control the ball. And they did a great job on that first possession, driving the ball down the field, but it ended in a turnover. And all of a sudden, you let Wake Forest on the field. I talk about the explosive plays last year. We've already seen it in the first possession of Wake Forest. Sam Hartman getting it done for the Demon Deacons. And if you were to guess who would have the longer pass of the first couple drives, you think Wake probably would. Perry's went for 46, but Robinson's catch for Army went for 47, but no points at the end of the drive. Fumbles can be a killer. Let's check in with Wiley down on the sideline. Yeah, Evan, I had a chance to listen in on the beatback huddle for Army on the sideline, and the message to Jacoby Buchanan, everyone else was, hey, Possession of the football in this game against their offense is more important than an extra yard. Don't worry about it. We had our one, but now it's time to tighten up. So that was the message on the Army sideline. Got to take care of the football and keep this Wake offense off the field. Forget battling for the extra yard. They're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, you can't fault Jacoby. He's trying to get that extra yard, but you got to cover up that ball. Because this Wake Forest defense... They are grabbing at it. And it's a live wow. ball, and it's not going into the end zone. He signaled for a fair catch, I believe, but you got to catch it for it to be a fair catch. This is going to be Army ball inside the five. 
The ruling on the field, the receiver gave a fair catch signal that recovered the ball at the two-yard line. First down, Army, at the two-yard line. Wow, big mistake right there. Man. Hey, lost Raheem it in the Murphy. lights. Yeah, Raheem Murphy. So Army's going to start from the two. Inside the two. If you're monkey, you're saying, what else could go wrong after that turnover? And you see this. Every week this year, Jeff Munkin has just been harping on poor fundamentals from his team. You can, can tell how frustrated he is, because look, they're, they're really close. To they are. Three and one, or even four. No, they played a, a tough schedule. You know, Georgia State last week at home, a game they felt they should have had. UTSA and Coastal Carolina are two strong group of five programs. The Sonic Clears are fantastic for Jamie Chadwell. Another pre-snap penalty. You got to be kidding me. Ball start offense, number 88 and number 89. Half wow. the distance to the goal penalty, first down. Good news for Jeff is half the distance to the goal line isn't very much. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's good news or bad news, but man, three t turnovers. Well, not turnovers, but three flags already by this offensive line. Plus the one turnover. One-yard penalty brings him closer to the safety zone. It's the fullback getting a little breathing room out to the three or maybe the four-yard line. Hayden Reed, the true freshman. Rondell stopping that fullback, attacking from that defensive tackle position. Defensive end position, I'm sorry, getting it done. Off-road led Wake Forest in the Army game last year with 10 tackles. Well, he's going to get a lot of action because they're going to be running right his way. Again, the fullback, Reed. And Ryan Smenda, Jr. Look at this Wake Forest defense just swarm around the ball. You need 11 hats on that ball. Gons coming up from that safety position making a play. Hey, BJ, Smenda's parents, Ryan Sr. and LaToya, are both retired U.S. Naval officers. Man. So you got to imagine they had a pep talk for Ryan <laughs> exactly. this week. Beat Army. Well, we saw him out there warming up. He was getting ready early. Black Knights converted their only third down chance in the first drive. Third and five. Tyler stumbles, and he's going to be spotted a yard shy of the line to gain. Dylan Hazen making a play downfield. Short of the first down. Well, defensive coordinator Brad Lambert had to change what the Deeks do. They usually play 4-2-5. That's been the base set. Playing more three linebacker sets. Are they going to go for this? From their own 11-yard line. Army going for it. They need a yard. They know what Wake Forest offense has done against them. You can understand the call, even if it's a little crazy. They snap it. Tyler hitting the backfield, and he's right at the line again. This may come down to a measurement. Wow, they go for it on fourth and one, and they usually make it. Good play by Wingfield coming up. I mean, it's a desperate call, but you got to like the aggressiveness, right? Yeah, but not this early in the ball game. I don't think I would take that chance, and especially not giving it to my fullback. Trying to get outside on this Wake Forest defense. Guys who are running to the ball, swarming every play. That's, that's a gutsy call. What's going through his mind right now? What will the chains say? First wow. down, Army. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What an early gutsy call. Every millimeter matters. Got to like the effort, though, up front. Those big guys getting it done. Wow. Gutsy call. Executed. 
what they needed it to be. Murphy in motion. And Tyler looking to throw. Deep ball. And it is nearly intercepted. Jalen Garns had it in his right arm and could not hang on. Well, the strategy is passing the ball. And Wake Forest is ready for this play right here. Just a great job by Shalen staying behind the receiver and turning that head back and finding the ball. First incompletion of the game for either team. Second and ten. Wake Forest stacking the box. Tyler hit quickly by Chase Jones and a host of other Deacon tacklers after a gain of about four. It's a great play coming up, forcing the quarterback to cut inside, not allowing him to get to the outside. That's how you stop this option. Now talk about this defense. You're right. They run that 4-2-5 because they have such athletic defensive backs. But this week, change to that 4-3. Go big against big. before it started the ball might have come out again Wake Forest presenting the football to the officials Chase Jones in the middle of that play the conductor Kobe Turner came out of the pack with it but no signal for change of possession so the Army punt teams coming on on fourth and about six Dufty came down and made a great play. He busted that play before it even got started. Taylor Morin standing at his own 48-yard line right by midfield. As Billy Belke, the junior punter, sends it away. Off the side of his foot. And it takes an army bounce. Skips into Wake territory inside the 45 to just about the 44. It's a 39-yard punt for Belke. Now that we have a moment, let's take a look at our impact players brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Sam Hartman has had an unbelievable impact at Wake Forest. Wow, unbelievable. 39 touchdowns last year, and he's already ahead of that schedule with 15 this year. He passed by Ryan Finley for fourth place all-time ACC passing yards. Now he trails just Philip Rivers, Kenny Pickett, and Taj Boyd on the all-time charts. And Brock on defense for Army is the guy. A long, slow mesh, and the Deacons meshing magnificently. Justice Ellison down to the Army 39, a gain of 17. Wow, watching him last week against Florida State, he's not a big guy. He's not tall. It's like he hides behind his lineman. He finds the hole. And he's just so strong and shifty. Hartman, pump fakes, takes off. And he's ushered out of bounds by Andre Carter, who's got five career multi-sack games in his career for the Army defense. But here's the all-time passing yards that we just talked about. Probably not going to pass Taj Boyd tonight. That would be a record of another sort. But uh, by the end of the year, be surprising if he's not right up there a long time alongside the all-time great uh, there he goes again Ellison just taking his time weaving and bobbing finding a hole and just attacking great job up front by this veteran offensive line for Wake Forest feels like something clicked from a confidence standpoint for both these Wake Forest running backs last week but especially Justice Ellison Marquell Broughton, the senior captain wow. of the Army defense, is down. They cannot afford to lose him. Well, Justice Ellison, sophomore from the Flint School in Ashburn, Virginia, I'm talking with Warren Ruggiero, the Wake offensive coordinator, about Ellison yesterday. And they, they spent a long time recruiting him, wasn't sure if he was the right guy. Wiley, uh, What's it like down on the sideline, and what can you tell us about the pursuit of getting
getting Justice Allison in the old gold and black. Well, I'll tell you something, Evan. It was not a love at first sight situation, if you will. Uh, Coach Clawson liked him a lot, thought he could be an effective player, but he wasn't one of their first offers. And then his senior year of high school, he switched from wide receiver to running back, and that kind of opened up some eyes uh, from the Wake Forest staff. He had a huge year, and uh, basically really late in the game, about the last week, they offered him. He took the opportunity, and it's been history ever since. And, of course, he had that huge game against Florida State this past weekend, 118 yards on eight or 114 yards on 18 carries he got some uh, pretty uh, loud phone calls and text messages he even heard from two nfl great santana moss and his old neighbor jamison crowder also congratulated him on his big day at florida state but that switch from wide receiver to running back was uh, a significant change in the trajectory of his career justice has some friends in high places brian oh no doubt about it it's good to see mark well brought and walk off the field himself what a spin move allison Inside the five, down to the three. <laughs> Both of these running backs are just dynamic. Uh, Christian Turner and Ellison. Great vision downfield, good cutbacks. A man with a spin move. Is that the B button or the X button or the Y button? <laughs> exactly. Clock continues to tick, under two and a half to play in this opening quarter. Wayne keeps it on the ground, and there's another score for Justice Ellison. Wow. Give credit to this offensive line. They are making it look easy. Opening up holes in Ellison. Just darting through them. Five plays, 56 yards, 98 seconds. Maybe they will get to 70 tonight. I believe they may. Army and Nate Woody and the defense continues to look for answers on how to slow down this Demon Deacon RPO. Wow, just opening up big holes down up the middle. But Ellison's just doing a great job of finding those holes, hiding them by, behind his lineman. It's just fun to watch. Not for Army, though. No. Well, tonight had to be the first time ever that the honoree who opened the gate to bring Wake Forest onto the field was an alum of the opposition. We met Major General Brian Menace down in the field before the game. He's currently the Deputy Commanding General of the 18th Airborne at Fort Bragg. And he had the honor of opening the gate tonight. It was a cool experience. He was really honored. We were excited to meet him. And uh, I asked him if there was a chance he wasn't going to let Wake Forest onto the field. Because <laughs> that might have been Army's defense's best chance from what we've seen so far. But they're going to continue to battle for sure. Fair catch at the five that time by Murphy. Wow. So this one coming out to the 25-yard line. For the Army offense and the Wake Forest defense, let's take a look at our impact players. Brought to you again by your local Toyota dealers. That's the guy, Jacoby Buchanan. We saw him fumble early, but he is a load to bring down if he gets going. Man, it would really help this offense. And then Malik Mustafa, we saw him come up and make the big play on Jacoby Buchanan causing that fumble. Kate, excuse me, Brian, Kate Ballard into the game, a quarterback for the first time, and he'll give it to Tyrell Robinson. Coming from his slot package. Picks up about five yards out to the 30. Hey, Tyrell Robinson is fun to watch, too. He's very fast, quick, and a really good week against Georgia State. In that second half, bringing his team back in in that ball game, sure did. Ballard has thrown a lot more passes this year than their other quarterback, Tyler. No relation to our sidelines, are Wiley. Cade Ballard representing Ballard's well out to the 41-yard line. It's a gain of 11 and an Army first down. Well-designed play right there. You fake the handoff to Jacoby, and then you just follow him right through the hole. And that's a big man to follow. Made a great block. And this is Army football right here. Six, seven yards. Keeping the ball out of Wake Forest's hands.
First and ten from the 41. And it's Cade Ballard again, finding some daylight. He takes it to the 47, a pickup of six, and now the moment you've been waiting for, here's Ballard on Ballard. Well, let me assure you, Evan, by virtue of Cade being on the field tonight, that is proof he is no relative of mine. But for Cade, this is somewhat of a homecoming. He's from Greenville, Tennessee, about three hours away. This is the closest game he has played to his hometown as a Black Knight and hoping for better memories than he had a year ago where an interception on a fake field goal really was the difference in the game. Travion Red made the game-changing play for the Deeks. Jacoby Buchanan met by a pack, and it will set up third down and two. Kevin Pointer stopping the big man in the middle. You know, this defense of Wake Forest. Yeah, what about I mean, the defense in front? They have so much depth. They rotate nine guys in and out of the game, keeping them fresh. And it's the Bear, exclusively the Home Depot. Depot. In the 60s today in Winston-Salem, it's cooled off into the low 60s, upper 50s tonight. Biggest surprise of the first quarter, Wake with more rushing yards, Army with more passing yards. And yet the score is about what maybe some folks expected, 14-0. On third and three to start this second period, it's a first down carry for Army's Cade Ballard. Good pursuit by Dylan Hazen making a play. So we've seen Kate Ballard carry the ball way more than I would have thought this early in the game. He's the son of a coach. He's a tough guy. He's a veteran, senior. Not all that big. Listed at 5'9". That might be generous. Under the center, Connor Bishop. Back to the B-back, the fullback, Hayden Reed up the middle. We asked Jeff Munkin about Hayden Reed and asked him if he expected the freshman to start immediately and be a factor. He said, look, I don't think any freshman is a guy that I can count on. With everything that they have to go through in those first couple months when they get to West Point, yeah. typically don't imagine a guy contributing until their second year, but Reed is an exception. Reed is an exception. He had a good week last week, carrying the ball eight times. But right now, the middle is stacked up. Good play right there by Kevin Pointer. And Dylan Hayes getting it done. This is Robinson navigating to the 40. And it will set up another third down and short after the seven-yard gain. How about Evan Slocum coming up from that safety position? One thing about Wake Forest, they got some aggressive safeties just coming up the field making big hits. Look at him lifting them up. Let's go. I'm not just saying that because I played safety in the NFL, <laughs> but I, I love the safeties. It's a heck of a time of year for you for a former safety in the NFL, for a former <laughs> outfielder, 15 years in the big leagues. All right, third and a short two. Buchanan falls across the line to gain. Carried across by Ryan Smender. Drag Smender across the line. The Bob came down hard. Number 40. Getting to Big Jacoby quickly. But man, he's a big man. He's carrying the load, I tell you. 260 pounds. That's tough to bring down by one person. You gotta swarm the ball. Army offensive coordinator Brent Davis says he's playing hurt right now, Buchanan, but look, he, he's a silent assassin. He's not gonna talk, but he'll talk with his pants. Believe that. Markel Johnson in the backfield now for Army. Ballard to throw, and it's dropped by Marshall. Wow. Sean Marshall had a gain in his hands and gave it away. You cannot drop that pass right there. You've got to make this catch. Good pass by Ballard right in the hands. This will be the 10th play of this Army drive and has spanned the corners. Pitch to the perimeter. Robinson met by an Army of Deeks. Thrown across the sideline by the young redshirt freshman Dylan Hazen. Dylan Hazen is having a terrific game so far. 
He is really reading this option really well for seeing it for the first time this season. A little bit of a longer third down here. Dylan, four tackles already in this game. You need to get to the 28. It's third and six. Ballard under center. It's refreshing to see quarterbacks under center, Brian. I don't know about you. Pressure's coming. And this is a prayer, and it's, well, it's dropped. It uh -huh. should have been intercepted. Martin. Through the hands of Jermel Martin. Wow. He won't get any sleep tonight. Well, he's, was... he's only got one clean hand. If you see the club on his right paw. He still can club and make that <laughs> catch right there. I mean, he just throws up a prayer here. Dylan in his face, he had to get rid of that ball. Kind of no man's land here. It would be a 51, 52 yard field goal. So Army's gonna go for it. They converted the fourth and short from their own 11. Fourth and six, shotgun, Ballard swings at Robinson. Can he get there? Wow, look no, at the he cannot. Man, Ryan Smender right there. The Deacons defense stands tall. Evan Slocum and company gets the ball. Never on downs after a 12 play, six minute, one second drive. No points. Open the game, Brian, with a drive of four minutes, 12 seconds inside the way. 10, that got no points. They moved the ball well. Hartman has only thrown the ball twice. There's the third pass, and it's a heck of a catch on a high bullet by Jamal Banks. Banks playing his first game as a 21-year-old. He celebrated his birthday this past Sunday after the win in Tallahassee on Saturday. Wow, I was on the field early today. I didn't realize he was that big. He is a big receiver. What a game against Clemson. Two touchdowns against the Tigers a couple of weeks ago. First home game for Wake since then. But Wake begins tonight knowing that six of their last seven games are in the state of North Carolina. They only have to leave the state once, and that's for the game at Louisville a couple days before Halloween. Big win for the Cardinals today on the road at Virginia. And uh, Nathaniel Smith shaking up on the field. We'll step aside as the medical training staff checks him out. Guys, because it's Wake Forest against Duke the Saturday after Turkey Day, and Crowder's already told Justice, hey, go easy on my Blue Devils. We all know Jameson was a star at Duke uh, seven, eight years ago. Uh, that, that friendship is checked at the sidelines, I think, for that game. In between the lines, it's no holds barred. How about Jameson Crowder now with Buffalo making some plays for a team that I think is favored to win? The Super Bowl this year. ACC Player of the Year from a season ago, Kenny Pickett makes his first career start in Buffalo tomorrow. First down from the 44-yard line. By the way, we, we came back looking at Nathaniel Smith on the sideline. He did walk off the field. Appeared to be okay. Watch Hartman right here. His eyes are downfield, and he sees Big Carter coming. Watch he just throw his body in front of him and hand the ball off. Wow. Hit as he threw that time. And it's incomplete. Pressured by Quabina Bonsu, the senior from Georgia who had eight tackles a week ago for the Black Knights D. It's gonna be third down. Good job by Bonsu penetrating through that veteran line of Wake Force. Army hurried to get some subs and they just barely got a line. It's dropped. Recovered. Hartman escapes. And he's drilled across midfield, but three yards shy of the first. Did a great job fighting for them, those yards. But man, gotta have better ball security. He was holding that ball out there like a loaf of bread. Watch him just take off. Man. Going for it on fourth, and Hartman lost it. There's and Andre it. Carter right there. We talk about Carter finally getting back there. And putting pressure on the quarterback. I'm sorry. And they called it an incomplete pass. If it was a fumble, it didn't matter who recovered it. Uh, Andre Carter 
beating Devontae Gordon around the edge. Talk about NFL scouts loving this guy. His size, 6'7", 260. Saw him early warming up. What do you think? Scouts were salivating watching him. Think about last year, Brian. Wake scored on 10 of their 11 possessions. They never punted in the game. They were stopped on a fourth and a short. So that's just the second time in 14 possessions that Army has stopped Wake Forest from last year and this year. Can they capitalize on it? Taking over at the 49. Ballard looking deep, and it's nearly picked again. Mustafa was there on the ball intended for Alston. There's my guy, Malik Mustafa. Well, you just like him because he's a former Richmond Spider. That's right. <laughs> but here, just total concentration, seeing the ball thrown. Did not take his eyes off the ball. Good play. Sophomore from Charlotte has made a huge impact. Played four games at Richmond in 2020, and his coach, Russ Huseman, basically said that this guy is too good for this level. And he called his friend Dave Clawson, and Mustafa had a relationship with the Wake Forest coaches because he attended camp in Winston-Salem as Quincy Bryant makes the stop. Russ Huseman at Richmond and Dave Clawson are friends, and Dave told us that Russ was really helpful in getting Malik to come to Wake Forest when he had a lot of options after breaking onto the scene with the Spiders. Yeah, that was a, that's a great story, you know, having that guy in his camp and having his eyes on him, and then finally being able to bring him on campus. Third it, down from midfield. And it's paying off, I'll tell you that. No, no, no. Movement again up front for the Black Plus Knights. Start. Offense, number eight, five-yard penalty, third down. Wow, four penalties so far. Offside, Army. Murphy, the wing back, guilty this time. And he'll have a chat with his coach on the sidelines. I mean, that's just devastating. You know, this early in the ball game, having four penalties like that. And you feel your body moving and you try to hide the flinch, but it's really tough to do. So instead of third and nine, third and 14, Ballard breaks one tackle, but not another. The veteran Dion Bergen playing his 55th college football game for Wake Forest tonight. Wow. In on the stop in his fourth down. But how about Kobe Turner, another former Richmond Spider in that backfield, really slowing it down. And Bergen makes the play. Yeah, the Richmond to Wake Forest pipeline working yeah. out pretty well. It's good to have friends. <laughs> Billy Belkey on to punt. Taylor Morin standing at his 15-yard line. Spiral kick, fair catch called for. And Wick will take over at their own 18-yard line. 33-yard punt. 14-0 Wake Forest. Deacons with the ball when we return. DHS trying to get the offense together. Now, 30 years later, they're leading a pair of Division I programs. And they were hired 20 days apart. And the guy that was involved with hiring Dave Clawson is now the Army Athletic Director, Mike Buddy. That's right. And the guy that hired Jeff Munkin is now the NC State Athletic Director that I was chatting with a couple weeks ago in Raleigh, Boo Corrigan. Sam Hartman scampers and picks up three or four. The craziest thing about that story going back to 1992, Brian, is Dave Clawson was fired after the 1992 season. He came in in 91 with a different coach. Munkin came in in 92 with a new coach. Clawson and the holdovers stayed one year and then were let go. As Ellison goes up the middle near the first down marker at 39. I, I asked Dave Clawson yesterday, what would you do after the 92 football season? He said, oh, I got fired. And it was a bit of a crossroads. I said, did it make you consider leaving coaching? He said, if anything, I dug in. And he yep. moved to Columbus, Ohio with his college roommate. He waited tables for six months. That was tried, a great story, tried, waiting tables. Tried to meet. He said it was four table rated. Cooker's Bar and Grill, they had great biscuits. Hartman completes it across midfield. First catch of the day for Keyshawn Williams in a gain of 15. 
And Dave Clawson eventually got an opportunity at Lehigh for the 93 season for about $3,500, not for the month, but for the year. He did not file a tax return in 1992, he said, because he didn't make enough money. He had to get some money back from the government, living in poverty, as he said. It's a different story today as he leads the 15th ranked team in the land against his old office mate, Jeff Munkin. It's a wild world. On the computer in Dave Clawson's office, he still has the name tag from Cooker Bar and Grill in Columbus, Ohio, to remind him of where he came from. <laughs> Ellison just continues to churn. You know, you got to give credit to Army's defense. They, the secondary really covered these receivers well. And right now, Sam is just taking advantage of the run. Another banged up. Black Knight, it's Quabina Bonsu. We'll take the timeout. Who <laughs> walked off the field? He's getting looked at in the injury tent on the sidelines. Jeff Munkin just hoping his defense can get back to back stops. Lake Forest on the march. Six plays, 50 yards already on the drive. First and 10 from the 32 for Sam Hartman. Or should we say Justice Ellison in the uh, offense? Exactly. 10 carries, 88 yards, a touchdown already. And it just says a lot about this offense, though. Sam Hartman, he's recognizing that, hey, the run is working. Let's stick with it. Quentin Cooley gets his first carry of the night. Carries the pack down to the 27-yard line. It'll be second and five. One thing this Army defense does not have is that depth that Wake Forest has, so they need Von Zoo back on the field. Hartman's throw to the perimeter. First down to the 10. Donovan Green makes his first catch of the evening. Picks wow. up 17. Donovan Green was wide open. He was just waiting. Sam Hartman finally looked open, found him wide open. Good play by him. Nice block by Quentin Cooley picking up the yep. linebacker, too, after he was holding that slow mesh. Tenth play of the drive in the CPI security red zone. Sam Hartman crunched. Picks up two. Good play by Broughton downfield with the coverage. Chris Frey among the Army linemen in on the stop there on Hartman. Hartman had his eyes set on Donovan Green, but Brockman picked him up. Sam, sixth in ACC history with 87 career touchdowns. Hartman hit again. This one's going to be a sack. He lost a yard. Looks like yeah. Sam is angry right there. And the wide receivers not move. Good play by Peyton Hampton. Yes, this is going to be a tackle that Peyton Hampton remembers for a long time. He's a senior from Advance, North Carolina, one of the six North Carolina natives on this Army team. Went to Davie County High School, made his first start of the season last week. He remembers attending Wake Forest games as a kid on the hill growing up. Now he's playing for the U.S. Military Academy against Wake Forest. Third down, goal to go. Sides. Andre Carter. No, he was drawn by a false start. Six. False start offense, number 62. Five yard penalty, third down. The first penalty against Wake Forest tonight. Carter, good job getting across the line, recognizing that. Right tackle, just a little flinch. Hartman to throw on third and goal. Buying time to the outside, completes it. Perry out of bounds. I beg your pardon, make it green out of bounds at the one. Donovan Green was wide open in that corner. Sam Hartman wasn't looking to his, uh, his right. He was looking to his left. He takes off to his right, and he's recognized Donovan Green wide open. Huge turn.
turning point in this game. The ball spotted right at the one yard line. Fourth down. Clawson letting the clock tick down before he calls a timeout here. Clawson in his ninth season at Wake Forest, 55 years old. He's got 55 wins at the, as the coach of the Deeks. And there's Andre Carter, who could become the first first round pick out of Army since 1947. Since 1969, only two Army players have been drafted in the NFL. They've both been seventh rounders. So it's a crazy, I mean, Ryan McGee had a great story that came out yesterday on Andre Carter. And, how he got to Army, how he kind of fell through the cracks of recruiting. And, uh, I mean, we, we were chatting with Mike Buddy, the athletic director at yeah. Army, formerly with Wake, known him for a long time. He, he, he had a great term to describe the student athletes at Army. He said, they're freaks of goodness. Uh -huh. And I thought that was just such a great way for him to put it, that, to describe the caliber of character that matriculates through West Point. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of these guys got bigger things on their mind outside of football, but they develop these guys into really good football players before they leave. And Carter, he is a freak of nature, 6'7", 260. And he can get it done. All right, up the middle. Cooley stretches it out. It's a touchdown for Wake Forest. Second of the season for Cooley. Quentin Cooley, the sophomore, getting it done, reaching out there. I mean, Army slot really held up well. Did a great job of reaching that ball across the line. For a second, it didn't look like he was going to get there. Second effort. Wonder if the officials will take a second look at this. Peyton Hampton once again coming across making the play. Look at that second effort. Holding that ball out. I mean, that's the instance where you do it. Fourth down on the goal line. All you got to do is get to the tip of that white line. And I think that ball was across. Wake Forest will go on and kick the extra point. The red shirt freshman Matthew Dennis who has done an admirable job replacing Nick Skiba, one of the great kickers in the history of college football from an accuracy standpoint. Dennis smooth down the middle. And a cool moment for Quentin Cooley. Great second effort here. Thought he was stopped. Reaches the ball out there. Look at Hartman jumping in there trying to push. Whatever it takes, BJ. Whatever it takes. I, I do think the ball crossed the plane, but that angle made me rethink <laughs> my initial. Don't rethink it. But no, that just shows you what type of player Hartman is, though. More deliberate drive that time. That took over five minutes off the clock right. as opposed to just racing down the field. Give Army some credit. Eh? The secondary is playing really well for Army. Shutting down the pass. Andre Carter thinking, here we go again against Wake Forest. Dave Clausen's Deeks up 21 zip. Ivan Mora on for the kickoff. 2.37 remaining in this first half. What a day it's been so far in the ACC. Georgia Tech in overtime. Getting the second straight win after they let go of their head coach, Jeff Collins. First time since 2018 that Georgia Tech has won games in back-to-back -back weeks. Louisville was down 10-0 against Virginia early today in the noon game. Outscored the Cavaliers 34-7 the rest of the way. Wow. Give Georgia Tech a lot of credit. I mean, they've been playing some good football the last couple of weeks, beating Pittsburgh. And Duke has been playing really yeah. well, too. 
That's two impressive wins. Duke's only loss was to Kansas, who played a thriller of their own. They suffered their first loss, though, for Lance Lightfold and company against TCU. And a great game in Lawrence. Tyer Tyler back in the game for Army. Black Knights have moved the football, but they have not gotten points out of their efforts. Turnovers and penalties hurt Army so far in this first half. Aiden Reed, the ball carrier. It'll be third down and about four from the 31. Ryan Smith on the play. These linebackers are playing really well for Wake Forest. Wouldn't be surprised if Dave Clawson takes the time out if he needs to get a stop. That ball tipped around. It's caught by the quarterback. <laughs> and Tyler takes it across the line again and then some. That's a completion and a reception for Ty Ear Tyler after it was batted back in his face. How many times do you see this? Ball batted back. Great athleticism jumping up and getting that ball. And Tyler, he knew what to do with it once he got it. Just how they drew it up off the hands of Kevin Pointer. He's not getting away this time. Chase Jones on the leg of Tyer Tyler, and then Dylan Hazen finished him off. A loss of eight. Wow, what a great game plan coming in this game. Lambert doing a great job of strategizing against this Army's offense. Timeout called by the Black Knights with a buck 21 remaining, and a 21 nothing hill to climb for Army. Only 79 yards on the ground. They moved the ball in the air on their first drive of the game. Got four completions in the half, four for eight. Sam Hartman's just six for eight. Wake has 24 rushes and eight passes to tonight. Well, I think Army just surprised everybody coming out passing the ball. But right now, you can see the game plan that Lambert had coming in. Play the gaps, fill the gaps. They're stopping the fullback and they're forcing the quarterback to pitch the ball early and keeping them from getting to the outside and they're swarming the ball. So great strategy by Lambert coming into this ball game. And of course, Brad Lambert was not on the defensive staff last year when Army right. shredded the yep. Deacons. He was the Purdue defensive coordinator at the time. Brad Lambert beginning his second run at Wake Forest was here with Jim Grove a decade plus ago. Tyrell Robinson picks up some good yardage there. Gain of 12. And Bob Ford getting down the field. How about the big guy? Forced the pitch. And he, look at effort. He can't teach effort. He got downfield and made the play. So from second and 18 to third and six. Clock ticking under a minute. Army's only attempted one field goal all season. Well timed pitch. Robinson again. Has the first down, breaking through the attempted tackle of Malik Mustafa. Wow, Malik came up from that safety spot in attack mode. Gosh, these safeties are so aggressive for Wake Forest. Let's take a look at Mustafa coming up from the safety. Pitches out there. He comes flying and turns that play back in. Army back to the line with the clock ticking after they reset the chains. And now a quick timeout from Jeff Munkin as Tyre Tyler takes it to about the 44, maybe the 43 yard line. 32 seconds left and the clock stopped. Army's got one timeout left. It's really the first two plays where you saw the quarterback pitch the ball out there. And Robinson hitting the corners. But this defense just swarms to the ball. Well, look, last week at halftime, Army was down 17-0, and they felt like they wasted 30 minutes of football. And I mean, Tina Servasio, the sideline reporter on the broadcast, relayed Jeff Munkin's halftime message, That's which right. I loved. Give me your jersey now. 
or decide to play football in the second <laughs> half was the halftime message. I'm not sure he's going to be that angry about the way they play. Now, the penalties and the fumble yeah. are the, the four or five things will be I was about to say, he might be just as mad as last you week. Think so? Because, yeah. I mean, Army had their chances, and they fumbled, them, fumbled it away, and then the turnovers just truly cost them because they were driving the ball. Well, last year, between these two teams, there were 21 points combined in the first quarter. There were 28 points combined in the second quarter. And then all hell broke loose in the second half. Tyler, Tyler has another first down, and he gets out of bounds inside the 35 and 34. Great coverage downfield. Shalen Gons covered Austin. And all of a sudden, Tyler had to take off. Good pursuit by the big man, the conductor, Turner, forcing him out to the outside. Oh, the conductor, because he's big into music. And he was in Richmond. He went on an international trip, Slovenia, Croatia, and Italy. Sung in the Basilica, San Marco. Historic venue. Completion of the sidelines, 21 seconds left as Kate Ballard back in, and he completes it to Isaiah Alston. There's Andre Carter. He doesn't expect the defense to be on the field again, but uh, he's getting to the head start to the locker room. Down to the 28-yard line. Tenth play of the drive. 21 seconds left, one timeout for Army. Ballard throws behind Robinson, or bigger part of Austin, Austin, but the yeah. adjustment to make the catch. Clock stops as the chains will move down to the 20. Good concentration by Austin. That ball was thrown way behind him. Bach restarts. No need to spike it. Ballard throws it away. It's intercepted easily. Picked off by Dylan Hazen. And Wake Forest defense stands tall at the end of the half. Wow, Dylan Hazen, what a gift just thrown right to him. <laughs> Being in the right place at the right time. Maybe they should have spiked it. Excellent job. Nine tackles on a day now, an interception. Talk about game planning. Great job by this young man. First interception of the season for Dylan Hazen. Mike Forrest forcing two turnovers in the half. Numbers 10 and 11 on the season. The turnover ratio is up to plus eight among the best in the ACC. How about Dylan Hazen? Just last week he's playing back up. This week he's starting at linebacker and having one of the best games of his career so far. The linebacker depth is growing at Wake Forest. Dave Clawson used to say he wanted a pair and a linebacker, and now he's got a pair and a spare, and now a pair and a spare and an extra in the linebacking core. 21 0 is the halftime lead for the Demon Deacons. What were you more impressed by the Wake Off? Well, they're certainly hopeful to do something similar tonight. But like Dave Clawson's yelling to be aware of an onside kick here. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this Army team got that same speech as last week. Wake up for the second half. You see something a little different. Cole Talley sends it deep, and it skips past Keyshawn Williams and into the end zone. Hartman and company will take over at the 25-yard line. Fireworks continue to blast off next door at the Carolina Classic Fair. Meanwhile, Wiley Ballard just caught up with Jeff Munkin. Wiley? Well, at halftime, Coach Munkin upset clearly with how his team played. He had a list that he ran through. Turnovers, fumbles, interceptions, false starts, other mistakes. And against a really good football team, we can't do that and win. We've got to play cleaner football in the second half. And clearly agitated because this is the second week in a row they've struggled in the opening two quarters. Just the 14th time ever that Wake is ranked in the top 15. Most of those times have come in the past year or so, about half of them. A.T. Perry, the first catch of the second half, picks up 11. Well, I figured this Wake Forest offense ran the ball in the first half. We might see Sam Hartman throwing the ball a lot in this second half. Good start for Wake Forest. A.T. Perry making a play across the middle. Long match. Hartman pulls it out. 
looks around. And he gets drilled. Yikes. That might be a targeting. Markwell Broughton. I think it was came in with a helmet first. Markwell came up with an attitude right here, trying to send an early message in the second half. This might be a targeting. Defense doing a great job in that secondary, and Broughton just comes up and drills him. So there was the targeting, perhaps, and then there was Bonsu throwing him down after the play was over. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, targeting defense number 20. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 96. Both penalties will be enforced. Correction, the previous play is under further review. So it's at least 15, it might be 30, and they said 96, but I think it was 97 at the end of the play here. Not typical stuff from Army, you expect discipline. You did not see discipline there. As that moments ago, Jerry Magalanis announced there is no targeting on Broughton, it's just a late hit on Bonsu. What do you think, Brian? Hey, this looks like a helmet to helmet to me, and especially on a quarterback. And then all of a sudden, Bonsu just throws him to the ground. I mean, that's helmet to helmet. I'm a little surprised there. That's not a targeting. But the captain of this defense on Army trying to send an early message in the second half. And right after Bonsu threw Hartman down for the what ended up being the 15-yard penalty, Andre Carter, another leader on this defense, was kind of flailing his arms. What are you doing? Well, that's good leadership. You're down 21 points. You don't want to get any more penalties. I already had enough in the first half. Hartman's okay. Ellison in the backfield. And Hartman bluffs a pass. Tries to leap over a defender. Who does he think he is? Oh, my. All I know is Dave Cross is over there holding his breath right, right. there. My quarterback is trying to leap over the DB, the same DB that tried to take my head off. Quick snap, Hartman looks down the seam, his tight end, Whitehart, had the ball dislodged late by Peyton Hampton. Peyton Hampton is playing well on his Army defense. <coughs> Linebacker is down the field making plays. That's, oh, that's a previous play there. Watching Hartman showing his heart and soul trying to go over top of Brock. Hartman's hops. Back to Ellison on the ground. And a good little jitterbug move there to <laughs> get inside the 30 down to the 26. It'll be third and two. Wow, he is so quick. You're talking about a guy who used to be a receiver and all of a sudden turned into a running back with those moves. Third down. Pulls it back, looking in zone, touchdown Deacons. A.T. Perry over the top, going for a sweep. Wake Forest kicking off, and another fair catch taken inside the five Army football out to the 25. Brian Jordan, when you listen to Dave Clawson, I mean, he played D3 football at Williams College. He also played basketball for the Fs in Western Massachusetts. And I mean, Jeff Munkin said he's really smart. I thought he would leave football and go be a gazillionaire something somewhere <laughs> in the business world. You know, he's the only coach that coached four di different Division I colleges and won 10 games. That says a lot about him right there. But he was at University of Richmond, and we loved him there. And we did not want him to leave Richmond. But man, I love what he's doing with the Wake Forest program. Uh, the success stories. I love the veterans that stay around. I mean, he has fifth year players. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Or don't watch. Wow. Sorry about that. Rondell Boythwood on the tackle right there. You can see Robinson not putting any weight on that leg at all. No. He ran all over the field against Wake last year. He had 11 rushes for 98 yards. He also had three catches for 33 yards and a touchdown. 
One of the eight touchdowns Army scored against Wake a season ago. I've got the goose egg so far tonight. And it was the reason that they came back against Georgia State last week. Yeah. Miles Stewart, who's only touched the ball one time all season, takes over for Robinson in that wingback slot. Dylan Hazen, who had nine tackles and an interception in the first round, encroaching on the line of scrimmage. And the fullback, Hayden Reed, busts up the middle for a couple. Three, maybe four. And Ryan Smenda bringing him down. It'll be third down. I think Wake Forest defense is ready for that fullback up the middle. They hadn't run with the fullback up the middle in a while because this Wake Forest defense has done such a good job of stopping them. What will Brent Davis go with here offensively on third and short? Staying with the quarterback, Tyler, he's got the first down. Brought down from behind by Dion Bergen. Tyler's having a really good game. Just following his blocks, cutting back. It's good vision downfield. Jeff Munkin got a master class in the triple option working for Paul Johnson all the way back to the late 80s at the University of Hawaii where he's a grad assistant and then worked with Paul Johnson again at Georgia Southern. Georgia Tech back in the win column last week and today in the ACC their first time winning back to back games since Paul Johnson was running things down on the flats in Atlanta. Yeah I wanted to definitely talk to Wally about that. <laughs> What was the last time they won back to back? All of a sudden, you, you look at the coastal division of the ACC, say, why not Georgia Tech? Yeah, that's true. North Carolina got a big win today down at Miami, hung on over the Hurricanes. Second down after the short game by Buchanan. Tyler flips it outside. It's Ijon Marshall for the first down. Pulled down eventually by Chase Jones, but a big gain. Picked up 20. A great play by Ijon Marshall here. Getting his opportunity to play here, gets to the outside. That's a rare play that the Wake Forest Deacons let him outside, but good run by him. This Army offense still holding that ball, Evan. Marshall's had a couple long touchdown catches. That's his longest rush of the season, 20 yards. Down to the 34. You can it up the gut for three. Again, Brad Lambert. <laughs> you talk about game planning for this offense. That middle has been pretty tough for Army to, to run through. Doing a great job of stuffing it. Here we are, Brian. It is five minutes into the third quarter. Each team has attempted the same number of passes in the game. You would not have believed that if I said that pregame. Each team has thrown 11 passes. You're exactly right. Dylan Hazen is having a career game. Yes, he is. Another tackle for him. That's his 11th tackle. tackle, yeah. He had 11 tackles on the season. At least one in every game. They were spread out. One here, three here, four there. He's the guy that, you know, he played as a backup. He got time, but this week he was asked to be a starter. And man, has he stepped up to the challenge. And he felt good playing against Army. Had a good game against him in his Wake debut last year. Tyler keeps it. We'll move the chains again. This Army offense is finding a rhythm here. This is what they do. Another first down for Army. Keep the chains moving. Keep Sam Hartman off the field. Wake scored in 90 seconds. Since then, Army has methodically galloped down to the 22-yard line.
pressure coming. Double reverse. Raheem Murphy made one man miss, but not the rest. There's the conductor. Just stuffing up that middle. Making plays. The loss of five. A little trickery by Army. But look at the pursuit of that Wake Forest defense. Just flying around the ball. Tenth play of the drive. They have not passed it yet on this particular drive. They'll stay on the ground. Marshall had the 20-yard run earlier. Gets this one down to the 20. Picks up seven. Good job by Evan Slocum coming up, taking on that wide receiver and forcing that ball to continue to go outside. There's Tyrell Robinson. Not looking good for his return tonight. Hopefully, he'll be okay for the rest of the season. Cross your fingers. That's a special young man from Dallas, Georgia. That was an ugly injury right there. Pressure in the backfield. Jasheen Davis gets there. There is a flag down. Apparently they picked up the flag. Quinn Moretzky is about to attempt his second field goal of the season. He's one for one. He made a 28 yarder. This will be from 42. Moretzky, good kick, but it fades wide to the right. Plenty of distance from 42, but it's no good. And the shutout continues midway through the third quarter for the Demon Deacon D. Just throwing salt on the wounds there. Army trying to score any way they can. Gotta feel bad for that young man. Moretzky from Honolulu, Hawaii, so it's a chilly night for his standards in the low 50s. <laughs> and Wake Forest takes over at the 25 yard line. Hartman looking downfield, wide open man. A bullet on the mark to Keyshawn Williams for 24. Guys, I know I said it earlier, how Sam Hartman just uses all his weapons. All five, six receivers just has almost the same amount of receptions on the season. Christian Turner. Well defended, Donovan Platt, another North Carolina native, freshman from Jamestown. Back in the lineup this week for Army, makes the stop, but it is a first down run for Christian Turner. So far, just an impressive performance all around, offensively, defensively for Wake Forest. They are just sitting back there taking with Army's defense and offense is giving it. Hartman, five receivers, and he connects. Jamal Banks inside the five. He had a slew of choices. He had plenty of protection, and Hartman threw a strike. Yeah, and it's big veteran fourth and fifth year seniors continue to get the job done. And again, a plethora of receivers of choices Hartman has out there. 37-yard gain sets up the run from the four. It's another touchdown for the Demon Deacons. Second of the night for Christian Turner. Talk about explosive offense through the air, on the ground. Wake Forest is just having their way with Army. What a drive. Four plays, 75 yards, 
79 seconds. Blitzing their way down the field. Dennis to make it 35 nothing. Brian, it was after the Florida State game last week that I felt the national media almost started to say, look, this Wake Forest team is for real. Yes, they played Clemson tough and took the Tigers to the wire, but it was more of a, oh, the Clemson secondary, they got to get that fixed. It wasn't Wake Forest right. offense. As we look at the Yellowwood drive summary, a five-star drive summary brought to you by Yellowwood. But after what Wake Forest did to an undefeated previously Seminole team that hadn't lost yet before last week, Florida State, a tough battle with NC State tonight. I think now, they have to be 15th in the country. They got this game, they're off next week, a home game against the BC team. Look, any, any ACC game is, you never know, but BC struggling. And Wake has a chance to really continue to ascend, maybe into the top 10 as we move right. toward November. And you know, you said it, that loss to Clemson, people still had question marks on this Wake Forest team. And to bounce back against Florida State, to me, was huge. Well, it's usually Tyrell Robinson returning those. Brahim Murphy into that role now. And well, really, that was the first time they returned yeah. a kick all game. But, I mean, th th this is the total package, what we're seeing right now tonight from Wake Forest against a, an Army team that the record doesn't say it, but you look a little deeper, and this Army team is pretty darn close to being 3-1 and one or 4-0 and oh coming into the game. You're yeah, right. Plus, you, you got a whole different offense coming at you and to be able to make the adjustments that Brad Lambert has made is impressive. Black Knights take over at the 20. Tyler got across the 20 but he barely got to the 21. Well what's going on is this defense is using their hands. They are expanding that option further and further to the sideline. And everybody's running to the ball. Look at everybody, use their hands. Going off one guy to the next guy, and everybody's getting to the ball. And the son of a couple of naval officers got there first. Ron Smender having a terrific game also. Army Navy this year, December 10th in Philly. Always a great spectacle. Tyler Tyler, incomplete. Looking for Isaiah Alston. Black Knights now 6 of 12 passing the ball tonight. Ballard and Tyler each have three completions apiece. And we talk about the depth of this Wake Forest defense. Deshaun Jones, the backup cornerback, is in the game. Great coverage downfield. And having the confidence to bring different guys in during the game and not miss a beat. It sets how different this Wake Forest team is this year. Tells you a lot. Now the fullback dive on third and nine picks up three, maybe four. But it's a punting situation here for most teams. And I think Army will do the conventional thing and kick the football away here. Well, I told you before the game, the best way to stop the option is stop the fullback. And this Wake Forest defense has done a terrific job. Taylor Morin standing right around his own 40-yard line. Belkey's boot. It's a good one. Bounces right into the belly button of Morin. And he gets signaled for a fair catch. So he will have the ball right around the 35. Let's go back to the last Wake Forest drive, Ryan. Four plays. The drive prevented, presented by Range Rover Sport. Just marching down the field. Yeah, and that's what we expected before the game. Sam Hartman just throwing the ball down the field. But man, he mixed it in with some good runs here. Kristen Turner, his second touchdown of the game. That just, we talk about the explosiveness. They're not on the field long. They get it done. And it starts with that 
offensive line. Great blocking up front. Ten completions to five different receivers so far for Hartman, but most of the damage has been done on the ground. Wake has over 200 yards on the ground, closing in on 200 yards, I should say. Quentin Cooley gets the carry to start this drive. And I love the way Warren with zero uses these running backs. They really try to break it down 50-50. Hartman to Whitehart for the first down. Beg your pardon, that's uh, Jager Bull, backup tight end, who made his first catches as a Demon Deacon last week. And he also has motivation because his dad recently retired as a rear admiral in the Navy as well. His dad, Dell, who played college football at Idaho. Hartman zips it downfield, perfectly placed for A.T. Perry. Oh, what a time that was. A.T. Perry. <laughs> Just showing off here. He, he is. I mean, he's in such a rhythm right now. He has great protection up front. He has all day to throw the ball, and he has great receivers out there making plays. Perry's over 100 yards receiving. He's only had four catches. Back to Cooley on the ground to the 20-yard line. Blake was up 21-0 at the half. They're on track to perhaps double their lead here in the third. And that one thrown away over A.T. Perry toward the end zone. Good coverage downfield by Army. Good block by Cooley, too. It was a blitz up the middle, and he picked him up well. Buying some time for Hartman. Perry's touchdown tied him with Cam Serenay, Red O'Quinn, and Chris Gibbons for the third most in Wake Forest history. Rising up the charts as the pass sails over Jager Bull's head. Fourth down and about six to go, and here comes the field goal team. Ricky Prohl, by the way, the number one all-time Wake Forest receiving touchdowns. That's a pretty good drive chart for the Deeks. <laughs> sure, it could be better. It's nothing like what it was last year. No, absolutely against Army. not. 38-yard try from Matt Dennis, the redshirt freshman. Nine of ten kicking field goals this season. And he's now 10 of 11. Confident young kid who has filled some big shoes in the place kicking department for Dave Clawson's Deeks and done a really fine job through the first half of the season. Well, 2.10 to play here in the third. We remind you to stick with us after the third quarter for the fourth. Brought to you by CPI Security. Wake Forest close out this win. You're 17 minutes and 10 seconds away from doing that. They'll be five and one at the midway point of the season. With six games left, three at home, three on the road, but two of the three road games are in the state of North Carolina. Over at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh and Wallace Wade Stadium at Duke, as you mentioned, right after Thanksgiving. After this victory, Evan, expectations are high on this Wake Forest team. Like you said, they are moving up the charts. Coming into this game, ranked 15th. Another opportunity to return this kickoff. It's Brahim Murphy. And he will scurry his way out to the 30. Picks up about 25 on the return. Well, here's the thing about Army, and Jeff Munkin has harped on this from an offensive perspective. Last year in 13 games, they won nine of them, including a bowl game win. The Armed Forces Bowl over Mizzou. 
Jamel Jones is the new quarterback and he completes the pass on his first throw of the night. You know, Army had eight turnovers in 13 games last year. Including the two tonight, they've got eight turnovers in five games this year. That's just not Army football. Right. Well, that's what they preach over at Army discipline. Jamel Jones, senior from the Colony, Texas. Making a name for himself. Jamel Jones, where has he been? <laughs> Good job right here. Good blocking up front. This is a strong kid. Breaking tackles. The colony adjacent to Dallas. Basically a part of Dallas. And Lone Star State. A big run there, picked up 25, all the way down to the 40. Jones pitches it to the outside. Miles Stewart ushered out of bounds right at the 33-yard line, a gain of seven. Again, great job by Evan Slope. Coming up, using his hands, forcing the running back to continue to go out to the sideline for a short game. By the way, BJ, the Seminoles team that Wake Forest defeated last week has a 17-3 lead at halftime over the NC State Wolfpack tonight, Carter, Finley, and Raleigh. That should be the last play of the third quarter. Kevin Pointer making the tackle from behind. Wake Forest, three quarters of shutout football. After the Black Knights scored 56 against them last year. It's on the move. They've got a first down from the Wake Forest 29-yard line as we get set to start this fourth quarter. Evan Leffler with Brian Jordan, Wiley Ballard down on the sidelines. Our entire crew with you from a sold-out Truist Field. The Wake fans have enjoyed it. The Army fans, not as much. And a flag to start our fourth quarter of play. There is no foul in the play. The block was legal. Second down. Thanks, Jerry. There was a rule change that impacted Army's triple option. You can't cut on the perimeter anymore. Right. Yeah. So that has changed a little bit, the technique and style of what they do, what uh, yeah, option teams do. I think that was a good call, too. You see a lot of injuries cutting the legs out of those linebackers and defensive ends. So the keeper for Jones stands, a five-yard gain. Second down. And I think that's A.J. Williams. Nope. Darrell Dixon, number 40. Getting his first carries. Sophomore from Trenton, Tennessee. I'll tell you what, this is Jamel Jones. Jamel Jones is pretty good at quarterback. He's making it happen. Now's a holding on to the ball, driving the ball down the field. Third down and one. See if they can finish the drive. They haven't done that at all tonight. Jones gonna throw on third and one. He's got Austin, and he's got a touchdown. There goes the shutout as the Black Knights convert on third and short. It's a 20-yard strike from Jones to Austin. And what do you know, having a pass the score is a touchdown for Army. Jamil Jones just took the ball and just drove it all the way down the field with his legs and now his arm. Good catch, way to hold on to it for Austin. Chamel Jones, two for two passing, 25 yards in the air and the touchdown. And on the ground, he had three carries for 34 yards. As you said, where has he been? <laughs> in just over three minutes to hit their first points of the night. 
38 7 is now your score. First touchdown catch of the season for Isaiah Alston. And just from looking down to the sidelines, I think we might have a new quarterback for Wake Forest. Perhaps Sam Hartman's day is done. An efficient 12 of 17 for 241. We'll see if Sam is in fact done or if he has a little bit more work to do. Wake Forest off next week. And a home game two weeks from today against Boston College. No game time yet for that one. Should come out or sometime midday this Monday. Keyshawn Williams, the explosive returner. Get ready to perhaps call a fair catch. We'll see. No fair catch. Here comes Keyshawn. And there goes the potential explosive return. Good, good coverage by Army down there. Sure was. Let's look at our Discover the Past brought to you by the Fresh Market. The passing distribution tonight. Now Taylor Morin has returned a couple punts. He hasn't uh, caught any passes, BJ, but Sam Hartman has got a lot of weapons. Well, that's the thing that I love about Sam Hartman. He uses all his weapons, gets everybody involved. Again, not like last year where he threw for 460-something yards against Army, but very efficient tonight. Hey, when you were playing, did you try to have, like, official team photos of you looking stoic and angry, or are you smiling? Because I was thinking, Sam should be a, a happier guy with all the weapons he has and the wins and the records. We need a picture of Sam smiling. But Absolutely maybe that's an athlete, not. No. He'll smile after the game. Never smile during the game. Got to gotta maintain that attitude. Hartman is still in there. And he's still completing passes to A.T. Perry. Now to the 24-yard line. It'll be third down and about three. Now I'm a little surprised Sam Hartman's still in the ball game here. 38 to nothing. Well, 38 to seven, I'm sorry. You know, the last thing you want to see is Sam Hartman get hit like he did early in the game. He was fortunate not to come away with a concussion there because I thought it was helmet to helmet. I would be holding my breath if I'm David, Dave Clawson. Hartman, multiple touchdown passes, seven straight games, 15 of his last 16, but only one touchdown thrown tonight. And that ball was tipped. And that's the first deflected ball at the line of scrimmage for Hartman, but he average, averages a couple of those each game. Peyton Hampton got the deflection there. It's almost a byproduct of the offense with him throwing the ball so close to the line of scrimmage. Well, that was a linebacker downfield. Well, he's so used to getting rid of the ball so quickly, reading his keys and delivering perfect passes downfield. Well, so today you got to give Army secondary a lot of credit. Ivan Mora, welcome to the Wake Forest Army series. They didn't punt at all last year. This is the first punt of the night for Ivan Mora. He has been kicking off. Mora's punt for 35 yards. Fair caught by Army. At last December's ACC football championship in Charlotte, the Z's on the hats of ACC officials this week in honor of Tom Zamorski. We pass along our condolences to Tom's wife, Carol, their two daughters. And uh, certainly something on the minds of everyone in the ACC football family this week. Twelve twenty-two to play here in the fourth. And Army, after scoring a touchdown and getting a three and out, trying to build toward what's coming up next week at noon against Colgate. Isaiah Austin right at midfield. Dragged down by Deshaun Jones, who's getting an opportunity to play here, the Richard freshman from Baltimore. How about this? 
coming into this game. We would have never thought Army thrown the ball 15 times today. Well, they had the 300 yard game against UTSA. They said it's basically didn't go into the game thinking they were going to do that. It was necessitated by what the Roadrunners did. Brent Davis said it looked like they had a punt line defensively up there with nine, ten guys in the box when we had to throw it. Markel Johnson, the ball carrier, sets up third and short. How about the discipline of this late Wake Forest defense? Stuff in that middle once again, but no gain by the fullback. And look, they've got seven points, but they're eight of 14 on third down. I mean, they've moved the ball almost all game long, and a flag fortunately saves the Black Knights because that play was a disaster. <laughs> All start offense, number 57, five yard penalty, third down. It's the rare instant when the fall start saved the yeah, Black exactly. Knights. Exactly. A great play by Turner. Right here, getting back there, getting his hand on the foot of the quarterback. Man, this defense is playing great for Wake Forest. And the Army offensive line has had a slightly different look all five games this year, which is certainly a factor in their disappointing start to the season. Back to midfield, and it'll be fourth and two after Dixon's gain of about five. Play by Ransom. Fourth down, Army one for two on fourth down tonight. Remember, early in the game, if you joined us late, they went for it from their own 11 yard line on fourth and one. Sensing that Wake Forest offense is going to be tough to stop. Got to take your chances when you got them. This is fourth and two, and Dixon is very close to the marker. I think he's got it with a spot. Just needed to get to the yard marker, and it is indeed a Black Knight's first down. Well, give credit to Army. They, there's no give up in them. They are playing hard. Still getting first down, half the first down. Good block by the center. Really open up that hole. Pressure coming, and down goes Jones. Bothroyd and Turner both got home for the Deeks. That collected by number 40, Rondell Bothroyd, at number 35, Kendron Wayman. Simon Dellinger slow to get up the right tackle. Wow, watch Brothwood here. Use his hands, get around the tackle and just attacks the quarterback. Everybody, a meeting in the backfield. We talked with Dave Clawson about Rondell Bothroyd. I mean, for Wake Forest, defensively, to go from Duke Edgefor in that position to Boogie Basham, yeah. and now Rondell Bothroyd playing that field end. Back to the air on second and long. It's incomplete. Broken up by Deshaun Jones. The oddity of what we're seeing tonight, B.J. Well, as a cornerback, you know they're not going to throw the ball deep on you right now. He's getting rid of the ball quick and getting a good push up front. So as a cornerback, just keep that receiver in front of you and break on the ball. Sean Jones did a terrific job there. Even Wake Forest backups are making plays. Stymieing Army in their only power five game of the year. Black Knights have played really well against Power 5 opponents in recent seasons. To throw, Kobe Turner comes with pressure, and it's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. I'm not sure what Austin was doing out there while receiving. You got to keep running. You got good pressure up front by this line. Look at Turner, the conductor, forcing the throw, and Austin, I think he just kind of gave up. They're going to go for it, it appears, on fourth and 16. This is like a Wake Forest formation. 
Four wide receivers in the shotgun. Jones is drilled. Good night. Kendron Wayman. Lake Forest takes over first and ten. Second sack of the year for Wayman. Wake will take over on downs. A.T. Perry built tough. Brought to you by Wrangler. What a night he's had. Big plays, big chunks down the field. Look at somebody different every week. It's A.T. Perry's week this week. Five receptions, 118 yards. A touchdown. And how about Mr. Hartman? He goes to six different receivers today. Perry's been his favorite. Five for 118. Our max performance brought to you by Z-Max. Mitch Griffiths is now into the game, replacing Sam Hartman as the Wake Number Forest 12, quarterback. Mitch Griffiths with the keeper. Griffiths up the middle, picks up five. Hartman likely done for the day. 13 for 19, 246 yards. Only the one touchdown. And how about Hartman? You know, you talk about these receivers. Jamal Banks against Clemson had a huge day. And then last week, Donovan Green has a huge day. And today, A.T. Perry, he just spreads the wealth all around. I feel like A.T. Perry has a lot of big games. Five for 142 at Vanderbilt. Long hold of the mesh and a drop downfield from Wesley Grimes. Grimes, one catch on the year. It was against VMI in the season opener. Grimes, big time high school player. Third most receiving touchdowns in a single season in North Carolina high school history at 26 touchdowns wow. in 2021 from Millbrook High School in the triangle. All those numbers mean nothing when you miss a pass like That's that right. coming across the middle, though. <laughs> Getting your opportunity. Trying to hype the exploits of the young man <laughs> in the past, but he probably wants to focus on the future. You're right. <laughs> Will Towns is the ball carrier. Richard Freshman from Jackson, New Jersey. First down. Wait. That'll move the chains. Good effort by that young man. Keeping the feet. Legs moving. And getting a tough first down there. I mean, it's likely, BGA, that by the end of the season, maybe not likely, but very possible that A.T. Perry could have more receiving touchdowns than anyone else who's wore a Wake Forest jersey. Think really? about that. Griffiths is sandwiched. Number 12, Mitch Griffiths with the keeper. Still picked up five yards in the process. Now Mitch started the opener. We didn't even talk about Sam Hartman's medical issue yeah, that kept true. him out of a whole bunch of preseason camp. Kind of a shocking news story that broke and he missed the opener, but it was great news that Sam was able to return. We did chat with Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, about Griffiths. And Warren just said he, he handled it great. Yeah, sure did. Both taking over as a starter and then moving back into the backup spot. There's a catch from Grimes. Second reception of the year for the freshman. And also the thing he said about Mitch is he will put him in at any time and run yeah. the same exact offense as Sam Hartman would. It happened against Clemson. Sam lost his helmet. That's right. Mitch came into the game for one play, threw a deep ball, drew a pass interference penalty. One of, I, I think, the six or seven PIs that were called on <laughs> Davos secondary two weeks ago. Big win for the Tigers last Saturday night over the Wolf Pack down in Death Valley. In action right now against Boston College. Griffiths saw a lane tugged down from behind by big number 91 Trey Sophia 66 250 well, here's the RPO run by Mitch look at him keeping his eyes downfield nobody's open just take off wake into the CPI security red zone yet again 
Deacons have been effective down in this part of the field tonight. Last year, of course, 10 touchdowns against the Black Knights. Only five so far this evening, but it has been an impressive team performance. Will Towns, the ball carrier, picks up about one. Brown, what's the mindset of a football player going into a bye week? Coming off a win. Coming off a win, really just relaxing and reflecting on, you know, the earlier games. And, and you know, the bottom line is you still got to prepare for your next uh, opponent. You just got time to re relax and get your body recouped. That's the most important thing of having a bye in the middle of the season. Get your body, get your legs back under you. Under pressure, Griffiths escapes, throws for the end zone, touchdown, Deacons. Wesley Grimes, his first Wake Forest touchdown. A moment that young man will never forget. How about Mitch Griffiths keeping his eyes downfield, recognizing Grimes getting to the corner of the end zone. Perfect pass. Grimes did a great job of keeping his feet in bounds. So he had 26 touchdowns last year in high school, third most in the history of North Carolina high school football in a single season. There's his first as a college football player. And that's the way you make up for missing that first pass. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Zach Murphy, Zach Murphy just kicked that PAT instead of Matt Dennis. And he sent it through. It's 45-7. The Demon Deacons in control. When they decided to score quick, they scored quick. <laughs> no doubt about it. Not just through the air, but also on the ground. Everything working well for Wake Forest today. But kudos goes to Brad Lambert. The strategy that he had to stop this Army offense worked to a T. Very, very different story tonight compared to what happened last year from a defensive perspective for Wake Forest. Zach Murphy is going to get a chance to kick off here. He just booted the extra point in the last possession. Wake's second touchdown pass of the night, one for Hartman, one for Griffiths. Four rushing touchdowns, two for Turner, one apiece for Ellison and Cooley. It's a short kick, and it's Hubble. And you pay the price for not fielding it cleanly. Ransom, among others, down quickly. 4.16 left in the fourth, and now time for a quick message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro, powerful tools for any project with gas-like power without the gas, fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. Jamel Jones, third string quarterback, Back in there for Army. And he's looking to throw. Three of five in the air so far. He's got Alston wide open. Isaiah Alston down inside the 20. Wow, give a lot of credit to Jones sitting back there, recognizing Alston coming across wide open. Just ran by Swokum. From the Army 16 to the Wake Forest 17. A 67 yard catch and run. Jamel Jones, big rollout, floating it out the back. Look out, folks. Wow, I didn't see this coming. This young kid, well, he's a senior. Yeah. Comes off the bench, throwing the ball downfield. Possibly can score once again. Carried the ball a few times into the Villanova game when the Army program rolled to their first win of the year. Tonight, four for seven. 
Kevin. Big play for Austin. Nothing doing there. Man. How about Bryant right here? Shedding the block, using his hands. Gets off. Good play there. Not going to be a great moment in the film room for Jarrell Dixon. <laughs> I was just about to say Dixon. He whiffed on the block there. Even uh, Jones out there by himself. Jones to throw again. Incomplete over the head of Brahim Murphy. It's fourth down, and it looks like Jeff Munkin is going to try to kick a field goal. Get the second field goal of the season, perhaps, for Quinn Moretzky. King John Wayman getting in the backfield, forcing the quarterback to throw that ball really quick. 33-yard try. The Honolulu native drills it. Forty-five ten with 2.56 to go. Meanwhile, next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern, Miami heading to Blacksburg for a face-off with Virginia Tech, Lane Stadium. Always rocking, though the Hokie fans have been disappointed by what they've seen over the first month and a half of the season. Looking forward to this Coastal Division showdown. Miami, Virginia Tech, lots of storylines next Saturday. Check your local listings. Brad, can we talk for a second about what these two programs have done in the tenures of Dave Clawson and Jeff Munkin? Because Army, in the history of Army football, and it is a, a storied history, they had one double-digit win season before Jeff Munkin arrived. They had lost to Navy six straight times before Jeff Munkin arrived. Now they've beaten them four out of five times. They've won double-digit games twice. And then Dave Clawson, this Wake Forest team, it's kind of routine. They're in the top 15 right now. Looking forward to perhaps another double-digit win season in Winston-Salem. It's it's pretty special stuff that what both these coaches have done. You no, know, it, it is. You know, especially two coaches that knew each other when they first started. Uh, but, you know, you look at this Wake Forest program, and, and you heard on Driven how he develops his program, how he gets guys to come and turn them into men. And they want to be here at Wake Forest for four or five years. And it takes veteran experience to win. Onside kick attempt. Army hit it before it went 10 yards, I think. Ball was kicked off from the 35, and it was tucked right around the 43. And I wait for it for covered anyway. So it'll be Deacon's ball under three minutes to go. And we got to squeeze in this message from Green Machine. With our 62-volt battery-powered blower in your hands, you are a machine. So power the machine with Green Machine. Available online at homedepot.com. Third quarterback for Wake Forest today is the redshirt sophomore from Orlando, Michael Kern, who's appearing in a college football game for the 13th time. Kern pretended to throw. Instead, he gave it off to Damon Claiborne, true freshman back from Aylett, Virginia. A lot of guys getting opportunities to play in, in games like this. Season high, 215 rushing yards for Wake Forest today. Without a 100-yard rusher, they've spread it out. Ellison had 96, Turner 46, Sam Hartman 36 yards on the ground. Cooley, Griffiths, Towns, and now Claiborne getting in on the act. Claiborne, no gain there. 
But I mean, you talk about Clawson and how he builds the program. You know, it's so hard to one to hold on to veterans to stay at just at at the school, but then to bring in freshmen and develop them into those same veterans later. Guys who are willing to be developed. Right, and he's done a tremendous job. That's why this program continues to win year after year. Give him a lot of credit. Give his coaching staff a lot of credit. They recruit the right kids for this program. Dave Clawson was 6 and 18 his first two years at Wake Forest. It's about to be 50 and 31 since. And that's nothing new. His first two years at Fordham, Vermont, he went 3 and 19. The, carry. the next three, he went 26 and 10. Yeah. His first year at Richmond, he went 3 and 8. You probably were calling for his job. <laughs> and, then, and then he went 26 and 12 after that, brought the Spiders to glory. And then 14 and 23, his first few years at Bowling Green, 18 and 8, a Mid American Conference championship. He, but he has done it repeatedly. Right. It falls in line of what he does at programs. He develops kids into winners. And he's done it all his career, wherever he goes. Brad, I rewatched Dave's introductory press conference yesterday. And everything he said in that press conference, he has done. And it, it, it was like a breath of fresh air because you hear so much talk from college football coaches for either cliche or bluster or whatever, and it's it's easy to say it. That's, I mean, there's a lot of people who can right. talk, but actually doing it is a very different thing. He's a doer, he's done it. A great staff that has been with him for a long time, bringing in some new pieces yeah. this year for the defense. It's made a difference. 45-10 tonight. But when you're a great leader, Guys will follow you, and coaches will follow you. And he has developed such a great relationship with his coaches that he just turns over the duties to those guys. He trusts those guys. And boy, are they getting it done. After the turnover on downs, Army with one more first down. Clock stops on the moving of the chains. Well, no, they just restarted the clock. Chains aren't set yet, but Scoreboard operators ready to go home. Perhaps the final snap of the day, barring a penalty. Jones airs it out deep, and it's incomplete. That'll do it. Dave Clawson. Gets his 56th win as the head coach of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. A 45-10 victory over his old colleague, Jeff Munkin and the Army Black Knights. This was a, a dominant, impressive performance. Offensively, but as we've discussed, even more importantly and more impressively, defensively. Yeah, give credit to Brett.